To hear him say that, I mean, what comes to mind? He's a sociopath. Of course, he's going to maintain his innocence. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 documentaries that shed light on cults. Everyone is a little fearful of cults, and then I have a feeling that cults control you rather than you controlling yourself. For this list, we'll be looking at the most insightful and fascinating documentary films and docu-series that provide insight into and information about cults or cult leaders. Is there an intriguing documentary regarding cults that you learned a lot from? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Manson Over the decades, several documentaries and fictional works have been made regarding the Manson family cult. He's been in jail every three weeks since he's been out of jail, and that's why we were hiding for so long. Now, throwing us in jail is nothing. We'll die for each other before you can separate us. The real-life story of Charles Manson is truly stranger than fiction. In 1967, the criminal mastermind started drawing together a group of impressionable people, mostly women. They would eventually kill many people, including Sharon Tate. These seven incredible murders were perhaps the most savage, bizarre, nightmarish murders in the recorded annals of crime. Manson, released just a few years after the crimes, seems to have been the first big documentary about the cult including footage from their home at Spawn Ranch and interviews with everyone from members to one of the convicted woman's cellmates to legal figures. The film is direct and disturbing. The girls, to get him out of jail, decided to commit copycat killings with writing on the wall and the whole thing. You know, multiple stab wounds. And um, thereby letting the police to believe that the killer was still at large. Its chilling opening sets the scene for a documentary that's sure to draw you in with its valuable insights. Number 9. Holy Hell In 1985, when he was 22, Will Allen joined an alternative community in West Hollywood. It would come to be known as Buddha Field, and Allen basically became the group's documentarian. This is what led me to my huge adventure. This is my story about what happened to me on my 22-year search for the truth. Decades later, he left the cult and used his footage, as well as some new recordings, to create Holy Hell. Budafield's leader, Michelle, a.k.a. Jaime Gomez, is said to have been abusive. He spoke as if he had gone into the cosmos and come back, and was here to tell us about it and take us there. Have you made contact with the Eternal? Or are you still obsessed with the momentary? Throughout the documentary, direct scenes from Buddha Field then and now are included, giving viewers lots of first-hand information about the cult. We also hear from old members with valuable insights. There was a phenomenon attached to this now. It's not just these good feelings I'm having. Now there's this, like, flashing light happening inside me. Budafield is still an active cult in the United States today, but holy hell certainly made more people aware of its practices. Number 8. Keep Sweet, Pray and Obey Warren Jeffs, convicted criminal and head of the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, has been the subject of several books and documentaries. One of the most well-known and deftly executed is Prophets Pray. Young people need to be protected from evil influences so that when they face evil, they already have a natural love for the truth. However, we want to discuss the docu-series Keep Sweet, Pray and Obey, which allows us to hear from the victims, especially the women coerced by Jeffs. For those of us who remember life prior to Warren Jeffs, Lazy. we remember the good times, people who cared about each other, that were working together. Their stories are harrowing, but the program shows just how much they endured and how strong they were in their ultimate defiance. Keep Sweet, Pray and Obey also explores the media's role in investigating the cult, delving into how Jeffs manipulated people and the disturbing techniques and rules he used to do so. I couldn't believe that one man, one so-called prophet, would have all this power, and so I started digging into it seeing what was going on. Number 7. Jonestown, the life and death of People's Temple The phrase drinking the Kool-Aid became largely linked to what happened to members of the People's Temple cult in Jonestown. While often treated as a joke, what leader Jim Jones did was no laughing matter. Nobody joins something they think is going to hurt them. You join a religious organization, you join a political movement, and you join with people that you really like. This documentary focuses on how Jones persuaded people to head to Guyana, where they were convinced to consume poisoned flavor aid. It features testimony from former members, a 
couple of whom were survivors of the Jonestown tragedy and family of deceased victims. On the night of the 17th, it was still a vibrant community. I would never have imagined that 24 hours later they would all be dead. Their stories are harrowing, to put it mildly, but also shed valuable light on the situation. Also included are clips of Jones's preaching and so-called healing, and a look into how he convinced so many people to give up their rights. If you take too many luxuries like sleeping, you tend to not really think for yourself. And I did allow Jones to think for me because I figured that he had the better plan. I gave my, my rights up to him. Number six, Heaven's Gate, the Cult of Cults. Heaven's Gate is one of the more well-known cults in pop culture. In the latter half of the 20th century, people became fascinated by the UFO worshippers and their tragic end. These people spent 22 years preparing for what they did, and I wish people would examine that 22-year period instead of just examining their method of leaving. Rather than focus solely on what happens to the followers, this docuseries tries to humanize them. Featuring exclusive footage of Heaven's Gate, it details how co-leaders Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles tricked people into believing that humans could essentially become aliens. What intrigued me was this statement. If you ever entertained the idea of a physical level above the human level, you will want to attend this meeting. We also learn what the early years were like and explore the darker parts such as how members were largely unable to speak to their families. The four episodes do not make for easy viewing, but they are important. It's difficult for our friends and our relatives who really do love us to understand that it's us who really want to do this. And they might think that it's better for us not to do this endeavor. Number five, Waco, the rules of engagement. The Branch Davidians are a cult with apocalyptic beliefs. In 1993, the now well-known Waco siege was conducted on their compound. We believe that this thing had to be brought to a logical conclusion at some point. We never fired one single round of ammunition. Was this 51-day standoff between the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and the Davidians, in which the FBI ultimately got involved, justified? That's one question that director and co-writer William Gazeki's documentary seeks to answer. There was an element in the press conferences every day to uh, demonize David, and uh, con it was through the language, you know, cult leader David Koresh. A mixture of Davidian clips, FBI tapes, interviews with those directly and indirectly involved, and more. Waco, The Rules of Engagement, presents both sides. But it is implied that the Branch Davidians' rights were impeded on. Interestingly, various cuts of the film were made, but only one seems to be accessible. The Fourth Amendment guarantees the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects. Ironically, a charred copy of the very amendment was found in the debris at Waco. Number four, The Deep End. This freeform docu-series follows Teal Swan, an influencer with questionable healing strategies for both her large online following and close-knit group of companions. Because when I'm dealing with somebody up here on stage, it does relate to you. The question is, how? The series was filmed over three years and uncovers the harmful nature of Swan's teachings. For example, she's seen encouraging her devotees to attempt to access traumatic, repressed memories a therapeutic process that is unconfirmed to be effective, particularly considering that Swan has no credentials. I'm going to ask you, for this week, you start looking at the world through the lens of trauma. What do I mean by that? The question is not what's wrong with you, it's what happened to you. More controversially, a number of her cohort of believers have cut ties with family members as a result of Swan's quote-unquote treatment a practice heavily associated with cult mentality. This documentary will definitely have you reevaluating exactly who you're following on social media and takes an investigative look at the underbelly of this massive community. She really is building this brand and connecting with people through her YouTube videos and her Instagram posts. But who regulates this stuff? Sometimes the easiest thing to find online isn't the best thing to find. Number three, The Vow. In or around 2007, Jahan Najem decided to try and film a documentary about Nexium, 
a self-proclaimed self-help organization that she took classes with. They begin to really see themselves for the first time. And when they really see themselves, they don't see what they thought they wanted to see. And these people want to leave the program right away. Access became an issue, though, so she abandoned the idea and didn't pursue long-term membership. In 2017, she learned it was an abusive cult. She and others ultimately documented their findings in The Vow, a combination of archival clips, tapes of now-incarcerated leader Keith Raniere and others, and interviews with survivors reveal how women were coerced. There's a lot of things I'm starting to see about the organization. It's just not right. I'm cautious talking with you about it because I know you do believe in Keith's good intent. Divided into two seasons, the first half focuses on Nixium and its victims, while the second is centered on court proceedings. Due to the docu-series' sensitive nature, various people and organizations were enlisted to help, and this thoughtfulness shows in the final product. To hear him say that, I mean, what comes to mind? He's a sociopath. Of course he's going to maintain his own sense. He doesn't have a moral compass. No. He doesn't know. He, doesn't, he can't differentiate. Number two, the Source family. While the Source family does explore the titular cult, it's said that it also doubles as a look at manipulation techniques. As soon as you wanted something, it was there. And you were there with the most beautiful young women in the world. It was truly utopian. However, some have accused it of not delving deeply into the harm that founder and leader James Baker, aka Father Yod, caused. Nevertheless, directors Jody Willey and Maria Dimopoulos incorporated things like old photos, videos, and interviews to detail the life that Father Yod and his so-called family lived. I realized I had to do it on my own. I had to get my own children. Because I believed that he was prevailing through me and that's what he wanted me to do. The documentary also explores the family's band, Yohawa 13, even incorporating their music. Baker apparently framed himself as the father his followers wanted and needed, and linked intimacy, illicit substances, and rock and roll to divinity. The Source family's focus on archival material allows viewers to go deeper into the world that he created. The teachings on health were, in many cases, I think, very progressive and, and very advanced. Some of them, I thought, were really irresponsible. For example, we completely abdicated the right to use medicine for any reason whatsoever. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number 1. Wild Wild Country The people in the community of Antelope, Oregon lived simple lives. That was true until the members of Rajneeshi Commune moved in and created the town of Rajneeshpuram. We wondered, you know, who these people are, why are they here, how long are they going to be here, you know, what, what's this about? Antelope residents were fascinated by and then distrustful of their new neighbors. The FBI soon gets involved, and incriminating evidence implicating the cult in things like sham marriages comes to light. Meanwhile, the behavior on display gets increasingly disturbing, with threats of violence, plans to tamper in elections, and more being explored. Voter turnout this morning was running 120 percent, and the number of registered voters was changing as quickly as the score in a basketball game. The docuseries finds a way to tackle all of this and the aftermath, and shows that everyone has a story to tell. At the same time, it has been called out for failing to include key facts about things like assaults that repeatedly took place. 